that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful time to be alive. And what an honor it is this morning for us to be bringing a brand new Christian into our church, into our church family. James Douglas D. Geraldo, along with his parents and their family and sponsors. And I feel honored and privileged because this would be my first baptism. I've done a lot of funerals. I did my own son's wedding. But this will be the first time for a baptism. So I am glad to have you with us this morning. For all of those who are looking at us through live streaming, welcome again. And we're here to have a good time. I'm a happy person. I like to laugh. I like to smile. I like to greet people to let them know I truly love you and I truly care. So again, welcome. And the happiness of the children of God be with you all. Come to worship freely. Come sincerely. Come expectantly. Come open-heartedly. Come gladly and come lovingly. The universe cannot contain the grace that awaits those who hunger and thirst for God's righteousness. We are here in the name of Jesus Christ. And now we will have announcements by Deacon Angela Rowan Jack. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to In Person Worship. Live streaming will continue for those who are unable to attend. Face masks are required by those who are not fully vaccinated and by all during the singing portion of the service. For those of you who wish to make an electronic donation, you can do so with your smartphone via Zelle or PayPal. Our address to donate for both payment services is donate at springfieldpresbyterian.org. Please contact Pastor Madeline or the church office if you have any prayer requests or announcements to share. Please contact the office if you would like to dedicate a floral arrangement for our weekly worship service. We would like to congratulate uh, Linda and Jeff Elker, whose son Edward was married in June. And lastly, if anybody would care to share their gift of being a liturgist or helping with a children's sermon, please contact uh, Dawn. Um, this is Dawn over here, and she'd be happy to get you on this schedule. Now, for some centering words. Jesus, as the shepherd, brings structure to chaos, wholeness to brokenness, food to the physically and mentally and spiritually hungry. These, this is from Brian Stoffergen. Now we'll start our call to worship. Responsibly, you will read the bold words. When politics call us to take sides, Christ calls us to serve one another. When issues threaten to divide us, Christ calls us to love one another. When injustice and oppression seem to overwhelm us, Christ takes on our burdens at the cross. Come, join in worship together. For we are one faith, one body in Christ, and we need one on another. Amen. Amen. Join me in our opening prayer. Welcoming spirit of saints and sinners, Open our arms wide enough so that all the guests, the neighbor, the child, the widow, the politician, the homeless, the brother, the sister, may be embraced by your love and grace. God in community, holy in one, open your arms wide enough to enfold us in your heart as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is 482, Baptized in Water.
as I do the children's service. So, can anybody tell me how they felt when somebody gave them a gift? Angela, what does it feel like to give a gift? Um, sometimes surprised, but usually very grateful. Yeah, and if it's wrapped up all pretty with wrapping paper and a bow, how, how does that make you feel? Excited. Yeah, and sometimes the wrappings and the bow are more exciting than the gift inside. Nevertheless, <laughs> you're still happy to get it because it looks so inviting, right? Yes. So there are some gifts that we really care about, and maybe there's some ah. So I'm asking you about gifts today, because in today's scripture we hear about a lot of gifts that Jesus gave to others. We hear the gifts his disciples sometimes to rest. That's a gift too, to say, take time to rest. We hear that he gives the gift of compassion for the crowds of people. We hear that Jesus also gives the crowd gifts of instructions, interaction, and healing. At the very start of the day, we also hear of another gift that Jesus gave. We hear that Jesus had taught his disciples how to go out and do the same things that he did, that Jesus is doing in today's story. He taught them how to share the good news and heal others with God's love and forgiveness. There are some pretty good gifts. Now, I made a gift this morning for my first backpack thing. I felt so sentimental about it that I wanted to share my gift with James. And so, there is something significant on this sweater. Can anybody tell what that is? I'm trying to brag. That's not it. The point is that you have a gift. And some of us have different gifts. We're not all the same. Thank God we're not all the same. Because if we were all the same, we wouldn't like each other at all. So this is important to understand that that gift was given to you with what? Love. And you know what? We can all share our love by our gifts. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and his time. Thank you for Jesus and his time. Help us to learn from him. Help us to learn from him. How 
to give our time to you. How to give our time to you. So that we can better share with others. So we can better share with others. Your gifts of love and healing. Your gifts of love and healing. Just like Jesus did. Just like Jesus did. Thank you, Lord, and amen. Well, all righty then. You all did pretty good with that. Moving right along. We will now have our prayer of confession. The God of Jesus does not want us to wallow in guilt, but to experience grace, mercy, and peace. Let us empty ourselves of all which burdens us, and welcome the one who lives with us forever. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of confession and the assurance of pardon. And you would read the bold. Steadfast God, we confess that we are so busy putting up walls between ourselves and others, we cannot see the home you are building for all of us. We spend so much time noting the differences between us and others, while you are embracing everyone as your child. We run to welcome those who look, talk, and act like us, and you throw open your doors to the stranger, the alien in our midst. Forgive us, faithful heart. By your grace, help us to see the household you are building for all people. There are no plastic protectors on the furniture. There are no rooms that are off limits. And even the smallest child is welcome to sit at the big people's table and be fed by your grace. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our peace, our hope, our Lord, our Savior. God's covenant with us is everlasting. God's steadfast love is forever. God's graciousness makes us new and whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are forgiven. Take a few moments of silent confession to our Lord. Amen. Now let us stand and sing our praises to our Lord. Glory to God, whose sh goodness shines on me. join me for our prayer of illumination. Living God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in the faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Old Testament, coming from 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 1 through 14. And this comes from the New Revised Standard Version. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as former, formerly from the time that I appointed judges over, people, over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use with blows inflicted by human beings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I will be reading the New Testament scripture from the Gospel of Mark, beginning with chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and then 53 through 56. And I, too, will be using the New Revised Standard Version. Now prepare to hear the words from our Lord starting with six. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region wherever and began to bring on the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My message to you this morning is, get out of the boat. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your name, 
You have urged us to go and proclaim your love throughout the world. Empower us with your spirit that we may proclaim your peace and reconciling love in our world. We, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Recently, my sister and I had a discussion about what it meant to have our families gathered together during vacation time, and especially on the holidays and birthday celebrations when they were children. We played cards, board games, and we went to the beach. We always planned events that incorporated our children in all our activities. It was a great time to get some rest and relaxation. But now, they are more concerned about going on vacation by having to take their cell phones and laptop computers so that they can check their voicemail and email and maybe even get caught up on some of the work they didn't get finished before they left the office. They may as well have stayed home. But even so, we still need to get away for a vacation from time to time with or without our devices. Jesus recognized that we need to take some time off in a while to get caught up on our rest. And an example of his concern is found in Mark 6, 30 through 34. Mark's telling of the Jesus story has a frantic pace about it. In the sixth chapter of Mark, Jesus sends out his disciples in pairs to go among the villages and to teach. He gives them power over unclean spirits. He instructs his disciples not to take food or a bag of money with them, but to accept with gratitude the hospitality expended to them. Jesus says to his disciples, if you are not welcomed, not listened to, do not make a big deal about it. As you leave, simply shake the dust off your feet and just keep on going. So they went out among the villages proclaiming repentance, casting out demons, and healing many who were sick. When they returned, they could not wait to tell Jesus stories about their accomplishments. Now, as you might imagine by this time, Jesus and his disciples created quite a stir among the people. So they find it difficult to stop and rest, much less eat a meal in peace. Even as Jesus listens to his disciples' stories, people are just coming and going. His disciples had just returned from a long and exhausting ministry trip. So he instructed them to come aside and rest a while. Jesus cherished personal privacy for times of spiritual renewal and teaching his disciples. I am sure prayer was likely involved. Jesus was a praying machine, a prayer warrior. He prayed at all times and at all locations, sometimes by himself and sometimes with others. He prayed when he was in trouble. He prayed for other people. Jesus offered his disciples a model for a prayer like the Lord's Prayer. For Jesus' prayer goes hand in hand with faithfulness. The disciples needed to center themselves to eat a proper meal, cooked meal, to be communion and with God and to sort through everything that happened. Jesus knows that in order to do this, he and his disciples had to take a break. Jesus probably told the disciples they must take care of themselves if they are to take care of other people. Jesus also needed time to mourn privately. Jesus learned that his cousin, John the Baptist, was executed by King Herod. So Jesus says to his disciples, let's go off by ourselves, get some rest, talk about the good you have accomplished, and share a quiet meal together. So they get into a boat, and they set sail. Isn't it interesting that Jesus' counsel in verse 31 sounds contrary to what to, ought to be happening in ministry? The disciples have come to tell him all that they have done, all that they taught, and what they have been doing. Why doesn't he pat them on the head and congratulate them for doing so much, for teaching so much? Aren't we called to be nonstop agents of transformation 
and liberation? Aren't we called to preach good news to the poor, freedom to those in captivity, and to proclaim the good news everywhere? Aren't we supposed to be on the move? Won't we miss something if we aren't everywhere? Aren't we supposed to get out the boat? We have a APNC right now who is pondering this very thing. How do we get out the boat? We are in the process of hiring an associate pastor. That associate pastor is designated to help us all get out the boat, to do mission work, to welcome people from our neighborhood that are different, to be around, to share our gifts, what I was talking about earlier. And if you don't think that this is important, think again. Because if we don't do this, look around. Look at all the empty seats. Even people live streaming, sometimes we get a few, sometimes we get a little bit more. But mainstream denominations are dying because we recognize we have to get out of the boat. For teaching means a lot. As Jesus and the disciples cross the lake in a boat, word spreads that they are on the move. And that's what's going to happen. The word is going to spread that we are on the move. People set out on foot and reach the place Jesus has in mind as a place of rest. When Jesus and his disciples arrive on the shore, they find a crowd awaiting them. The crowd want to hear what Jesus had to say. It is a part of the human experience to seek that which we find lacking in our lives. The crowd is hungry for an assuring word. They want desperately to be made well. And the word is out that Jesus offers what they need. Mark tells us that Jesus had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Though Jesus is most likely tired and hungry himself, he gives the crowd what they need most. He stops and focuses on people in need. He sees people whose lives are chaotic as they try to provide for their families. He sees people who are confused by the changes in the world around them. He sees people fearful of others who are not like them. Is it any different today? Recently, it seems there are more news about people being attacked simply because they attacked simply because they are different. But Jesus teaches compassion, and he sees people who have simply lost their way. He sees people who are hungry for reassurance and long for words of hope. When Jesus and the disciples get to the shore, they are hoping for a little R&R. &R. As the people see the boat going across the sea, they are running on land. They keep going through the cities, and more and more people follow. By the time Jesus lands on the shore, there is a huge mob. How do you think you would have reacted if you had been in Jesus' place? Here they were trying to get away from the crowd, away from the pressure and the hassle and the harassment of this ministry for a few quiet moments, arriving at the other side of the lake only to find waiting, the same crowd they had just tried to get away from. Does the text say Jesus saw them and he was irritated with them? No, it does not. It might make us feel better if they did say that, but that is not what it says. It says he saw a great multitude and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. That word for compassion is a very strong word. It means to be so moved on the inside that it compelled him to take action on the outside. That's James having a good time. Let him, let him have a good time. Sometimes we see situations and we would say, you know, I feel sorry for them. But that is not this word. The word goes well beyond that. It is to be moved that we actually do something about it to help resolve the situation. 
Jesus could have seen the broken, blind, hungry, and rightly said, I owe you nothing. You breathe my air, walk on my earth, drink of my rivers. I have given you far more than you deserve. You are sinful, unworthy, and rebel against me. You have no intention to follow me on your own. You are only following me because you want me to make your life more comfortable. But instead, at the sight of even rebels with knees, Jesus felt compassion. The disciples in this passage are eager to report their ministries, their feet to Jesus, all they have done, all they have taught, all the souls they have saved. They had compassion, yet Jesus' response seems to ignore their report and preference of retreat. Yet in seeking retreat from the people, they were met by the same people and the same places they ought to get away from. The rest they sought never happened. Why? because Jesus saw their needs and taught them many things. It is virtually impossible to be always queued up to please people, but it's possible to do the things that are pleasing to God. People are in our lives for a moment, but God is with us eternally. Remember what God, through the prophet Nathan, reminds David, that God has always been with him wherever he has gone, and that God does not dwell well in one place. We have the entire Old Testament to prove it. While it's important for us to do God's work, it's also important for us to take time for rest. We find true rest through recognizing the presence of God and trusting him. We can take time each day to tune out the distractions, put away the intense restfulness, and reflect in gratitude on the wonder of God's love and faithfulness. God created us with eternal reserves of physical, emotional, and spiritual energy, but we need frequent recharging as we will wear ourselves out. After we have spent our energy, we must rest and become recharged. How can we love ourselves and others when we are always going and doing and not pausing for rest? If we aren't resting and well, how can we do well for people we serve? The ongoing grind of doing God's work in our world calls for getting away from time to time to reflect, to renew and to spend time with God. We have the full New Testament story we have 2,000 years of God's faithfulness in the church, and he is here with us today. So let's ask ourselves this question. How much does Jesus have to do before we get it? It is not enough just to experience his faithfulness. It is not enough just to see his miracles. We must gain insight. We must learn in order to trust him. There was no private time for Jesus who took care of the great crowd and healed many who were brought to him. Jesus may have been tired, but he does not experience comp compassion fatigue. I believe there is twofold lesson for use in this gospel story. Like the disciples, we too are empowered by Jesus to do ministry in our daily lives, reaching out with God's love to our families and friends and even strangers. We have to get out of the boat in order to practice what Jesus has taught us. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassionate care and loving grace, Grant us depths of faith and confidence in your love that we may find our identity in you as our beloved. May God fill us with joy and peace with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us take a moment of silent reflection. And now is the time that I had spoke about earlier, the baptism of James Douglas D. Geronimo. And I will ask that the parents and the family, the sponsors, please come up. Grandparents, if you would like to also gather around here, this room over here, that's why I designated for you to be over there. Hmm? Hi, baby. I bless you in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, baby. <laughs> Come on around. Right here. And 
the sponsors, come close because I'm going to pray, have some words for you to say. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all the family members that came out to support our, our new Christian. We will now do the sacrament of baptism of James Douglas D. Geronimo. Presentation. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of age. Hear also the words from the Holy Scripture. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. Matthew 19, 14. Promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Acts 2, 39. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. And baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By the water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. Now we will hear from Elder Linda Amiano. On behalf of the session, I present James Douglas DiGirolamo, son of James and Kelly, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Now, to the parents, and you will respond, I do. Do you desire James Douglas to be baptized? I do. I do. Okay, gotta come from both. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith of your child? I do. I do. Okay. Sponsors, that would be Scott and Jennifer Dewar, uncle or aunt to James. Come forward so I can see you. I like eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage James Douglas to be faithful Christians. Okay, good. Now, to the congregation. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture James Douglas by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Jesus Christ, to be faithful members of this church? Yeah. We do. All righty. Now we'll have the Thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Oh, yes, we give thanks. Eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and open the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pouring of the water. Pour out your spirit upon us with this water. That this fount may be your womb of new birth. 
May all who now pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bind them to the household of faith. Guard them from all evil. Strengthen them to serve you with joy and to the day you make all things new. To be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns for you forever. Now, we will have the actual baptism. I'm going to try it. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. oh, what a precious baby. James Douglas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Look at that. I'm giving back to you now. I'm sorry, buddy. I have a bad back. I'm old. What do you expect? <laughs> James Douglas, child of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Congregation, everyone here, let us welcome James Douglas, who has been received, received into the, into the one holy, holy Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church, Church. through baptism. God, God has, has made, made him a member of the household of God, God to share with us the priesthood, priesthood of, Christ. of Christ. Let us welcome the newly, the newly baptized. baptized. And the people respond by saying, with, with joy, joy and, and thanksgiving, we, we welcome, welcome you into Christ's Christ Church. Church to share, share with, with us in this ministry. ministry. We are all, we are all one, in, one Christ. in Christ. And now, the peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also the, with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we are able to bless our new Christian for life. James and Kelly, bring them on out here and let him see his church family. And the rest of the family can now be seated. Thank you. What an honor. <laughs> he was so good. He didn't flinch. He knew that he was a prince. Linda, would you present the baptism and the gift, please? The certificate, this certificate you keep for life. <laughs> Good. And put it on right away. <laughs> oh, let's give him another round of applause. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, let me just say this to you both. I don't want you to disappear now that you got your baby baptized. Because so many times, we baptize babies, and then we go on to do confirmation, and you never see them again. So we're working on doing children's things. So stay tuned. It's coming. <laughs> and any time you would like to get involved, use your gift, because I know that you have gifts. I can see it in your eyes. So don't be shy. We welcome you and James. And let them be free. You know, it's a wonderful thing to hear babies crying. It's a wonderful thing to hear them laughing. It's a wonderful thing for having them to greet you with the joy and love. They don't know anything about who you are. They don't know that you may be different than they are. <coughs> Children have no prejudice. And that's why we love them so very, very much. So, I am delighted that we have new Christians and someone new that we can work on. <laughs> they didn't catch that. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna continue on with our service. And I believe we are now up to the affirmation of faith. Thank you very much. Let us together confess our faith of our baptism as we pray. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, 
everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets, the apostles, rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. This is a, another favorite time that I like, and I'm sure everyone else likes it too, when we have the opportunity to not only pray for ourselves, but to pray for others. So let us now do our pastoral prayer together. Holy God, our hearts exalt in you as we present ourselves in your temple to perform our vows, pour out our prayers and earnest supplication. Hear the petitions of your servants that we may find favor in your sight as we pray. Our heart exalts into you, O God. Our triumph song is lifted in you. You have given your people the confidence to come before you through the new and living way that Jesus Christ has opened for us. Grant your church grace to provoke one another to love and do good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, but encouraging one another in Christ. My heart exalts in you, O God. Illumine the minds of the leaders of the world with the wisdom that does not keep up prideful words or speak in arrogance. Help us to remember that the future is in your hands and hidden from human view, so that we might place our faith less in our clouded understanding than in your divine guidance. In this time of wars and rumors of war, earthquake and famine, and of nation rising against nation, we pray for the welfare of the world and for the faith to see that these troubles are but the birth pangs of coming to the kingdom of peace. Put your laws in the hearts of this community and write them on our minds that we may approach one another with true hearts and full assurance of faith. You raise the poor from the dust and lift the needy from the ash heap. Hear our praise, prayers for those who we call to you now, especially to Ruth A. and Yolanda R., those who are suffering from physical or emotional changes, we pray for the safe travel for all who will be traveling this summer. And a special prayer of thanksgiving for James Douglas D. Geronimo and his parents, his sponsors, his family members, who James today was baptized. And now I invite those here in the congregation who would like a corporate prayer to raise your voices now. Prayer for my friend Lori, who's been really having a rough time of it. All right. Let's pray for Lori, everybody. Keep her in your prayers. When you go home and you leave this place, remember Lori in your prayers. Anyone else have prayers they'd like to share? Charles, do you have someone you'd like to pray for? No, I think it's this gentleman right there's a, okay, please, raise your hand so I can see you. Oh, good, good, good. Right here, yes. Speak up a little louder, son. Uh, can we take the mic to him, yes. Angela? Yes, yes. Let me do that. We're going to bring the mic to you, son. Uh, well, uh, my great-grandfather died about a, uh, a month ago, and... I've been really uh, missing him. Yes. Because I knew him really well. Yes. Yeah. But I just, he, I think he's always with us. Oh, absolutely. He's here with you now. 
And I'm sure you can feel his presence. He's never going to leave you, okay? That's the one thing that we know about our dearly departed. We all have people, friends, family members who have passed on, but they're here always. Yes, Charles, you do have something. Wait, we're bringing the mic to you. My Uncle Mike. Okay, let us pray for Uncle Mike. Is there a special need for Uncle Mike that we need to really raise a prayer? Is he ill or? He's had some health conditions. He's had some health conditions. Yeah. Okay, all right, but God knows what it is that he needs prayer for. That's the wonderful thing about our Father. He sees and knows everything. Is there anyone else here that would like special prayers? What about for our nation? What about people around us? Yes, I, my little daughter, friend over here wants to say something. We want to hear you. I love my mom and dad a lot. Oh, isn't that precious? She said, in case you all did not hear out there in the, in the land of live streaming, she says she loves her mom and dad very much. Isn't that beautiful? Mom and dad, you guys must be very special. You see what I'm saying about little children? They were not inhibited. It didn't care that there were other people here. She didn't care, he didn't care that we used a mic. So please feel free, open your hearts. I know there are people who need prayer. Heather, what about your, your niece? She's still recovering. But Heather, we also have to be thankful because when we pray, what happened to your niece? Get the mic over to her, please, Angela. Tell the church what happened when we prayed. She's very optimistic, and miracles happen. The doctors see improvement without, with, with, with God being in her, in, in her life. Yeah, they, um, the doctors didn't know what was going on with her eye, just in case anyone didn't know. It was dilated. It's been over a month and there's no reason why we've done tests, but um, it's improving, and we don't know how, but God is working his miracle with her. Thank you, Heather. This is what I'm looking for. You know, when we pray, we like to hear the testimony that prayer does not go without being heard. He does hear us. He has compassion. And he gives us exactly what we're looking for. Look, I've been having an anxiety of my own. And it's something that I probably shouldn't even be worried about. I have to get another car. And with the COVID, the prices are way higher than what I paid for the car a few years ago. And I've been anguished about it. How, how am I gonna afford this, these new prices? And what I gotta put down? I'm just as human as you are. But you know what my sister said to me? She's my spiritual leader. She said, did you forget that God is going to give you exactly what you need and what you want even because you are blessed? So don't worry about it. It will come. This is what I'm talking about when I say anxiety, how we worry. The variants are now starting to come out. And they're saying, even if you're vaccinated, you gotta be careful, you gotta be protected, because you could get the COVID or now this new variant. So we gotta pray real hard now, and we be consistent and constant. Amen? Amen. Come on, let me hear you. Amen? Amen? Did I not tell you in the beginning that we are not a dead congregation? And we love the Lord, and we can show it. So put your laws in the hearts of this community and write them on your minds that we may approach one another with true hearts and full assurance of faith. We raise the poor from the dust and lift the needy from the ash heap. Hear our prayers, dear Lord, for all of the prayers that we said, all that we asked for. And we know that patience will prevail. Ordinarily, I'm not a very patient person. When you're gonna give me something, I want it now. <laughs> I don't wanna wait. Give me something and I'm excited and just as happy as a little school child. Because that's the thrill of knowing that God is always with us. 
So we commend those who have departed. Help us to remember that they are in our lives and that they still love us. And they have eternal rest. They're not in any pain. They're in a very happy place. And loving God, you have inscribed your holy will upon our hearts and minds. Grant us grace to hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering and the assurance of faithfulness to Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, Angela, would you lead us in prayer as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I did have, I should have shared this a little bit earlier, and it kind of slipped my mind, but one thing that I did want to share with everybody was, um, I think most of you know this, that our church gives out scholarships, and one of the scholarship recipients had written a nice letter of thanks back, so I'd like to share that with you real quick. Uh, my name is Juliana Monte Monticello, and I feel extremely honored to have been one of the recipients of the First Presbyterian Church of Springfield Scholarship. I'm writing you to express my gratitude for selecting me an awardee of this scholarship. It was extremely generous, and I know it will assist me in the financial aspect of furthering my education. I just graduated from Jonathan Dayton High School on June 16th, 2021, and I will, be, I will be continuing my studies at the University of Delaware this coming fall. I intend to major in Italian education and a minor in Spanish. Academics has always been one of my priorities, and I look forward to the new college environment with rigorous and challenging coursework. In addition to my academic pursuits, I hope to become involved in, a various, in various extracurricular extracurriculars as I was in high school, such as tennis, choir, Il Circolo, which is an Italian club, and APPLE, the Association of Pre-Professional Leaders in Education. As I complete my higher education over the next four years, I will strive to learn all that I can Upon graduating, I hope to find employment as an Italian teacher. What I look forward to most about becoming an educator is that I can give back to people, just as the First Presbyterian Church has given back to me. I thank you again for your generosity and interest in my future. Sincerely, Juliana Monticello. How beautiful is that? Thank wonderful. you for sharing that. So, Let's wonderful. give a round of applause for our recipient. What was her name again? Juliana Monticello. Very nice. That's one of the things that our church majors in. We do that every year. And Chris is the chairperson. And we take a lot of time. We got a lot of applications. And we took a lot of time to read them through. All of them were great. But we only have but so much we can share. So we did the best we could. And isn't it nice that she responded to it's us? A, it's a wonderful letter. Thank you. Yes. It certainly is. Thank you for sharing that, Angela. Sure. Okay, now for our offering. Lord of the heavenly hosts, make us like King David, who rejoiced with great gladness and singing in our presence. Let others see and hear our joy and be drawn to you. We dedicate our offerings and our lives to your service. Through Christ your Son, amen. We will now have a solo by Kristen Rubling Jess, Something Beautiful. Oh, 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 
beautiful. Amen. Let's give her a round of applause. Nice. Now let us stand as we uh, sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Because you because have, have compassion, compassion on us, steadfast, steadfast love, you do not hold anything back, but fill us with your good gifts. May we share from our abundance as well as from our need, so our offerings might be an enduring witness to your hope, your peace, and your healing for all. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 475, Come thou fount of every blessing. And if you can remain standing, let us sing with joy. equally. Share God's steadfast love as we seek to live in faithfulness. Go to share Christ's passion with everyone. Tear down dividing walls and build bridges of hope. Now, go to live as one as the Spirit gathers you with others. Build communities that welcome all, especially the outsiders. We will now have our postlude before we conclude service. service. Thank you. And let us say thank you um, for our compliment. Chris, 
Do you want to explain who our accompaniment is this well, uh, Lilia is on vacation? Well, Lilia is off to Russia to see her family. We have Rich gratefully, gracefully playing for us, as always, and he sounds wonderful, and so look forward to hearing from him for the next five or six weeks, I believe, until he's done, but. Good, wonderful, welcome. thank you. <laughs> what a blessing not to have to worry about someone to place our, our infamous Lilia. <laughs> Now, go in peace, as I said, and I just, camera couldn't see little James and his companion. That's his cousin? In the, yeah. and, oh, I love it. They were rolling on the floor. He already <laughs> decided this is his home. And I am just delighted. Okay. It feels so good to have them back. So we are out now. Thank you for coming out, everybody. <laughs>